Emotional baggage, quite a familiar term, isn't it? But what does it really mean? At its core, emotional baggage is the sum of lingering emotions from our past that we carry around with us. These emotions, often negative, stem from experiences that have left a deep imprint on us, shaping our behaviors, our reactions, and even our self-perception. It's like carrying an invisible backpack filled with old wounds that haven't fully healed, unresolved conflicts that we replay over and over in our minds, and limiting beliefs that hold us back from reaching our full potential. Imagine each of these experiences as a stone, with its weight proportionate to the impact it had on us. Some of us carry pebbles, others lug around boulders, and most of us have a mix of both. But here's the thing, our emotional backpacks aren't fixed. They change and evolve as we journey through life. New experiences can add to the load, while healing and growth can lighten it. The key to managing our emotional baggage lies in self-awareness. By acknowledging the weight we carry, we can begin the process of unpacking, understanding, and ultimately, healing. By doing so, we can ensure that our past experiences don't control our future. We all have these emotional backpacks, but the trick lies in how we carry them. So you might ask, why should we care about our emotional baggage? Well, imagine for a moment that you're hauling around a hefty backpack day in and day out. It's heavy, it's uncomfortable, and it's consistently slowing you down. That's what emotional baggage is like. It weighs on your mind and heart, affecting every aspect of your life. One of the most significant impacts of emotional baggage is on our relationships. Unresolved feelings and past hurts can distort our interactions, leading to misunderstandings, resentment, and even broken relationships. It's like trying to connect with others while wearing a blindfold of past experiences. Our mental health is also deeply affected. The weight of past traumas can lead to anxiety, depression, and a host of other mental health issues. It's as if we're stuck in a cycle of negative emotions, unable to break free and live in the present moment. Moreover, our overall quality of life takes a hit. Emotional baggage can sap the joy out of our lives, leaving us feeling drained and dissatisfied. It's like we're trying to navigate our life's journey with a map that only leads us back to our past. In essence, emotional baggage is a heavy burden that we carry around, often unknowingly. It impacts our relationships, our mental health, and our overall quality of life. It's like carrying around a heavy backpack everywhere you go. It's time to lighten the load. Now, let's delve deeper. What's in your emotional backpack? Just as we can't begin to declutter a room without first identifying the items that are causing the mess, we can't start to unpack our emotional baggage without identifying its sources. These are often deeply ingrained, stemming from past traumas, heartbreaks, or societal expectations that we've internalized. These sources of emotional baggage can be as varied as the individuals carrying them. Perhaps it's an old wound from a broken relationship that never quite healed. It could be unresolved conflicts with family or friends that have been swept under the rug, only to weigh heavily on your heart. Or maybe it's the lingering sting of harsh words spoken in anger, words that replay in your mind, fueling self-doubt and insecurity. Then there are societal expectations, those invisible yet powerful forces shaping our beliefs and behaviors. The pressure to conform, to achieve, to look or behave a certain way, these too can fill our emotional backpacks, often without us even realizing it. But here's the thing, we can't change what we don't acknowledge. Identifying these sources of emotional baggage isn't about assigning blame or dwelling on the past. Instead, it's about shining a light on these dark corners of our emotional landscape, understanding their impact, and taking the first step towards letting them go. So take a moment to reflect. What's in your emotional backpack? Which past experiences are still affecting you today? Remember, acknowledging them is your first step towards liberation. One of the heaviest items in our emotional backpack is often resentment. This rancor, this bitterness, it weighs us down, binding us to past hurts and wrongs. But imagine for a moment, the liberation of setting down this weight, the freedom of letting go. This is the power of forgiveness. Forgiveness is a journey, a process. It doesn't mean forgetting or pretending something didn't happen. It isn't about letting someone off the hook for their actions, no. Forgiveness is about accepting what has happened, understanding the impact, and then making a conscious decision to release that burden from your heart. It's like untying a knot. The knot is the event, the hurt. You can't change that it's there. 
but you can untie it, loosen its hold on you, that's forgiveness. And remember, forgiveness isn't just for others, it's also for ourselves. Often we are our own harshest critics, holding on to mistakes, failures, missed opportunities. We need to learn to forgive ourselves too, to understand that we are human and humans are fallible. We make mistakes, but those mistakes do not define us. So let's start untangling those knots one by one. Let's practice forgiveness for others and ourselves. Let's lighten our emotional backpacks and step into a future unburdened by the past. Because forgiveness is not about condoning actions, it's about releasing the grip those actions have on us. Our inner dialogue plays a crucial role in our emotional well being. This sentence is no exaggeration. Our thoughts shape our perceptions and ultimately our reality. Negative self talk, that incessant inner critic, can be a massive contributor to our emotional baggage. It's like a stealthy, relentless thief, slowly robbing us of our self-confidence, joy, and potential. So how do we combat this hidden foe? The first step is awareness. Notice when you're engaging in negative self-talk. Are you constantly criticizing yourself? Are you always expecting the worst? Do you belittle your achievements? Once you've identified these patterns, you can begin challenging them. But here's the thing, challenging negative self-talk isn't about denying or suppressing your feelings. It's about understanding them, questioning their validity, and then consciously choosing a more empowering narrative. And this brings us to the next key step, replacing negative self-talk with empowering affirmations. Affirmations are positive statements that can help you challenge and overcome self-sabotaging thoughts. They can be as simple as I am capable, I am resilient, or I am deserving of happiness. The trick is to make your affirmations believable and relevant to you. Remember, change doesn't happen overnight. It's a process. Each day with each thought, you're rewriting the script in your mind. Be patient with yourself. Be kind to yourself. With time and practice, you'll notice a shift in your inner dialogue towards positivity and empowerment. It's time to rewrite the script in your mind. Embracing vulnerability can be a game changer. In a world that often equates vulnerability with weakness, it takes courage to show up and reveal your true self, warts and all. But here's the thing, it's in this space of openness and authenticity that healing and growth truly happen. Brene Brown, a renowned researcher once said, vulnerability is the birthplace of innovation, creativity and change. And she's right. When we allow ourselves to be vulnerable, we open up to new experiences, new perspectives, and new possibilities. We become more resilient, more empathetic, and more connected to those around us. But vulnerability is not just about opening up to others. It's also about opening up to ourselves. It's about acknowledging our feelings, accepting our imperfections, and giving ourselves permission to be human. It's about letting go of the need to be perfect, the fear of judgment, and the pressure to have it all together. So how do we embrace vulnerability? It starts with self-awareness. Recognize your feelings, your fears, your desires. Then give yourself permission to feel, to fail, to dream. Reach out to others, share your struggles, seek support. Remember, it's okay not to be okay. You see, vulnerability is a strength. It's the courage to show up, to be seen, to live authentically. It's the willingness to risk being hurt in order to experience love, connection, and joy. So let's celebrate vulnerability. After all, vulnerability is not a sign of weakness, but a testament to your strength. Journaling is a fantastic tool for unpacking emotions. It's like having an open conversation with yourself, a dialogue that unfolds on paper, giving shape and form to your innermost thoughts and feelings. It's a safe space to lay bare your fears, to celebrate your dreams, and to acknowledge your insecurities. Journaling is akin to whispering into the wind, letting your words carry away the weight of your emotional baggage. It's an opportunity to reflect, to question, and to challenge your own narratives. As you write, you're not just narrating your story, you're actively engaging with it, dissecting it, and understanding it. It's a journey of self-discovery, a pilgrimage towards emotional freedom. It's about exploring the uncharted territories of your heart and mind, and in the process, discovering new layers of your being. So grab a pen, find a quiet corner, and let your words flow. It's a cathartic process that can help you unpack and lighten your emotional backpack.